So in today's session, I'm going to uh, focus on uh, how to design use-oriented systems, things that we need to consider when you're developing a, a information system. So uh, if I start from the beginning, uh, when we have uh, uh, to design or when you're asked to design a system like the exam example given to you, so we need to involve your users in the process. So that's how uh, you know most of the newer software development method works. And you need to understand how their businesses work, right? For example, if you are developing e-commerce platform, you should be familiar with it. If you are developing a hospital management system, you have to first understand what is happening there. Now, without understanding their work, uh, what they do, we cannot build a solution for them, right? And you can uh, use uh, users as a source of data on work habits, the loads, and also their performance requirements. Now, uh, because those information you have to collect in the beginning and you have to cater that. For example, sometimes they might say, okay, I, I want... Uh, you know, uh, simultaneously work with uh, 10 users for a given time so that you have to uh, design your system such a way that it will handle for at least for 10 users. Similar to that, they might say that, okay, when I uh, want to get information, I should be able to get information within, uh, you know, two seconds time, one second time or fraction of a second time because very important. For example, if, if we take financial domain, the time is very, very important. So performance requirements is very, very important. And at the same time, uh, you have to keep up with the user needs. Um, so you have to... Uh, uh, keep up with the user requirements. And I told you like some of the development uh, technologies, we work in some cycles and I told you like it might work in two weeks, one month and so on. And, and user uh, requirements might change. And at the same time, we have to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking care of the technological changes as well. So I had a, uh, meeting with my final year projects. The third wave is disappeared when we start our project. We had that, but now it's not. So there are things like that, the changes in the technology as well. And if you look at agile methodologies, at least the, the two things that we have discussed in detail, we have noticed that users are actively involved, right? So therefore, when we are designing we have to uh, design our system such a way that we have to focus on user-centered design as well as human-computer interaction principles, which you might uh, discuss in a separate module, right? So therefore, you engage your users in the design sprints. That means the cycles that we have discussed and, and uh, also your early working models, which we call prototype, right? and also take that advantage of data-driven uh, design techniques. So, so those are the some of the things you have to consider when you are designing user-oriented system. Right, so how do you maintain a healthy development process, right? Um, so uh, in nowadays, when you look at uh, the development, it's not like an early days that you have separate teams who only developing, right? So early days, we have separate teams who interact with the user, uh, getting their requirements, and there was a separate team which, uh, you know, develops it. And there was another uh, operations team actually deploy it. Uh, and there was a separate maintenance team and so on. So everything has changed over the years. We now discuss about the concepts like DevOps where you are you are, you should be familiar with um, you know all the different phases in the development. Sometimes when I talk to my students, I will say um, I will work only on front front end, and my colleague is working back. No, it's it should be 
like you should be comfortable with both front end and back end because it's what uh, you know uh, the companies currently look at you right and then we also talk about the continuous integration and continuous deployment which means that uh, when you make some changes uh, it should be appear in the production level as well what i mean here is i hope i talk about the uh, maintaining code repositories like github where you can uh, you know make some changes and once it commits it should uh, go to the production so there are some uh, ways that it can be done automatically we call in github we have something called uh, github actions where you can use this so it's very important that uh, you use in this uh, and and uh, and and look at the, the the best practices and we will also uh, use user testing strategies uh, for example we use a b test and then uh, we have what we call usability test because um, as as i discussed early uh, you have to uh, have a good you know relationship with your uh, users right um, and then uh, in a b test what you do is uh, for example you can give different versions of the design like let me say uh, you design two different user interfaces and you ask uh, okay which one is better right um, so which means like you know a user can decide which one is best suited for them because that's one way that you can determine um, how uh, uh, the user feels about the designs and at the same time uh, if you look at uh, usability testing uh, in usability testing so uh, you can look at how users are interacting with it right uh, for example uh, if you have a web design how do you know that how users are interacting with your user interfaces yes so in usability test for example uh, what is important is uh, you can evaluate your design performance or functionality for example if you design a website you have to make sure that the users can easily find the information on the on the your website right how do you know this maybe you can record user clicks in some website they are recording uh, each and every user's interaction with the website so that they know what information they look at it and depending on what uh, information users are frequently looking at we can change the the design so it's very very important so those are the two testing strategies where we can users are involved in and then uh, you can also collect uh, feedbacks um, you can look at the analytics you can have surveys if in case if you are going to uh, you know uh, request from majority of the users and then if you want to get information from the key users maybe you can go for interviews and remember uh, anyway when you have a user involved in you have to adapt to the changes so it will be always iterative and incremental right so uh, so you cannot say uh, it, it's in a one single go you cannot uh, uh, you know develop something so it will be iterative and incremental uh, in the development process right um i talk about two things uh in in the previous one where we can incorporate user centers design and human computer interaction principles so let's uh, focus on uh, user centered design principles so a uh, couple of things the first one is you need to understand user needs their preferences and context. Uh, for example, sometimes uh, you like white background where you have black text. Some preferred, uh, you know, black background and white text. Right. So you need to understand 
uh, user needs, their preferences, and their context as well. And then all these requirements, you have to have a, what we call the measurable uh, user goals and objective, right? So if you can't measure whatever the requirements, it's very difficult. Like remember performance we discussed early. Now when we say the number of users who can interact with your system for a given time in parallel. So it's a measurable user requirement, right? So if we can so we can measure that or how many users can maximally interact with the with your system without any problem. So always you have to have clear, measurable goals and objectives. So when we say a goal, so for example, uh, let's say when you are developing a student management system, so you are going to uh, design a efficient, functional, um, easily accessible system. So then you have to define what, what do you mean by, you know, uh, efficient means right that means uh, if you can uh, if you say efficiency is uh, if the users can find something uh, quickly you know you can make some missions for example how many uh, you know second it will take to find some particular information then you can also uh, decide with accessibility and inclusivity in mind so when i say accessibility you have to think about uh, various different things, things like sometimes you have to think about the differently able uh, people as well. For example, some might not be able to, uh, you know, see, for example, in that case, you can have uh, audio narrative narratives in, in your system. Similar to that, you have to think about the accessibility in, in that perspective. If there are people with uh, vision problems, make, maybe, you can have a feature where they can actually improve the, the size of the text, right? So uh, so those are the, the another principle that you have to uh, think about. And then also involve users throughout the process, which we have discussed earlier as well. And prioritize simplicity, consistency, and intuitive interfaces, right? Simplicity means like do not have too many texts, too many you know, text boxes, too many things to fill. I mean, you can have text boxes. For example, if there's a place where you have to put today's date, make it a simple. You can automatically put today's date, right? So there are things that you can improve where when you design a system. And it should be consistent, which means that your uh, system should be consistent from one place to another place. So for example, Let's say when you browse through your design, if you use different color uh, system in one and then there's another different color set without any, you know, uh, relationship, then that might be problematic, right? So some, some of the users might take some time to adapt it to your system. So if you have consistency in your design, that will be helpful. For example, let's say in your design, you can have a tooltip where when you move your mouse pointer, uh, if if that mouse point indicates what happens in that particular feature, which will be helpful, then you can have it in all the all the places, right? In a similar fashion, which you can maintain the consistent, right? Okay, and then uh, focus on the human computer interaction principles, especially uh, when you want to ensure the effective communication, and then uh, use visual design and feedback mechanisms, like I said earlier that when you are designing a system, that uh, your graphics, for example, should indicate what it is. Sometimes uh, people might not need to read your text, right? And for example, let's say you send us something else, for example, password, right? So how do you feed, give the, provide the feedback? Let me give you a scenario. When you want to design interface, um, you have to uh, 
design the interfaces what uh, users think about uh, about the particular system and uh, how they thought about uh, how the process will work for example logging into uh, a system as we have already know we have done these things you have a username and a password and when you enter you go to main interface or sometimes now we have some dashboard where you can go into other places for example if you have a student management system and when you log into your profile it should uh, you know show your information right and then if you need like for example your uh, payments or your results so there should be a, some way where you can interact so there are some use expectations and uh, we have some idea how things work so those should be reflected in your design interfaces right um, and also third point you have to have efficient and flexible interaction methods accommodating different user skill levels and the preferences uh, for example we know that uh, when we have systems some are uh, uh, you know preferred accessing uh, you know clicking mouse mouse you you can click in the visual interface but if you go to experience users you know that uh, they prefer command line so therefore even in the database interaction you have to provide both the graphical user interface as well as uh, you know command line interface for example take uh, mongodb for example so in MongoDB database, there's something called MongoDB Compass, where it is the graphical interface where you can connect with the database. And then uh, there's a shell interface where we call Mongo Shell or Mongo SH, where you can interact uh, uh, with the commands itself. So which means that if you're a beginner or if you're a general user, you have a graphical user interface. But if you are a more experienced user, then you can have a command line interface where it's you have more flexibility, or you can do a lot of things what is not available in the uh, you know graphical user interface. So remember that. Uh, so when you are designing system, you have to think those things as well. And also, like uh, when we are designing systems, errors are inevitable. For example, let's say you are asked to enter a date and we know that the dates can be entered in multiple different ways. So when you are designing the system, you have to exactly tell the user what date format you are expecting, right? So whenever he puts some values, for example, date in a wrong format, you can provide a result. Right now, a simple question like you have to make sure that there's no errors. Like when you ask age of a person, we know that it should be between, for example, maybe zero to 120, maybe not more, more than that. And if if they are not in that range, we know there's something wrong with that the value entered. So we need to prevent errors when you are designing the systems. And last point is always look for user satisfaction, comfort, and then enjoyment. So your system should be enjoyable uh, uh, where they perform their work. So it should be you know, efficient. They can do it easy. For example, if the users has to always uh, you know, type and enter, it's a tedious task. So there are like ways that you can improve that, right? Uh, for example, that's why nowadays when you're filling a form, when you type first, uh, you know, a couple of characters, it will fill automatically. Like, for example, we can record user's information somewhere that you can provide that. Okay, assuming the user is expecting that. So that's what you see in, for example, in mobile phones nowadays, when you're typing a message, even in Singlish, when you try to type something repeatedly, it will get back right as a suggestion. So those things should be accommodated when you make designs. Okay, A-B testing in a little bit more detail. I already 
explain you it's about comparing you know various versions of uh, the design uh, it could be features or it could be some content as well so i think you already have seen in chat gpt right sometimes you ask something in the chat gpt and you will notice that there are two responses and you have to select one of them so there is simply a b testing so which one do you think is the best answer right you are actually getting it from the user itself right so uh, a b test as i discussed will present different versions to uh, in a control environment and you can have some what we call kpis performance indicators to success of each version so for example if you ask me like the example i have given you earlier that you ask question and you provide with the two different answers to the user assume that if the question that we put in the chat gp is the same question and if you can collect answers from multiple users which version gets the highest votes we can select it as the best version right so you can see okay number of users uh, selected as the key performance indicator right so a b testing can be used for your layouts especially you know, those who are working in designing web pages always you can present multiple versions for the clients and get their preferences uh, you can have colors uh, and also like in some examples are given such as email subject lines right uh, the last one statistical analysis uh, uh um which one that I have discussed earlier as well, when the users are selecting, you can decide which one is the best version, uh, but just by looking at the average and the max and so on. So simple and statistics might help you determine this one, right? Uh, okay. Um, then usability testing. Um, this is to evaluate effectiveness efficiency and satisfaction uh, that could be for a product or an interface or uh, that you can do by observing how users are interact within it and this can be done in various stages in the design and development and then you can have a moderated one so you can have in person or you can have remote unmoderated uh, and also you can use the cloud protocol where we can uh, decide which one or which interface which product is more efficient effective and so on so remember these ideas are very helpful when you're actually deciding on which systems that you are going to take in we are going to discuss this idea under the outsourcing then we have testers uh, provides the qualitative and quantitative feedback. Uh, so some things we can measure, some things are, uh, we could not measure, we call qualitative. And then this is used to determine the issues. And then the insight from the usability, we can guide the enhancements. So depend on uh, the outcome of this test, you can actually modify the features or the product or the interface. Right. Um, you can also think about combining testing. Um, the two tests that we have discussed is A-B test and usability test. And idea is they have developed for different purposes. But then again, you can use them together. So, um, by combining these two what you can get is it will be effective not only effective and it's also uh, very useful helpful and it's also enjoyable or it will be easy to use so conducting regular tests is very very important and because it's continuous improvement based on uh, the principles that 
you are focusing on each of these tests. Right. Uh, when you are tailoring systems to end user needs, um, we talk about two ideas, user centers design and human computer interaction principles. And you can use these together with the HOL methodologies. And then you can collaborate with uh, your end users for the feedbacks. And each iteration, then you can apply uh, these different uh, you know, outcomes from these tests to improve and enhance uh, user requirements. So what happens if you do not consider user requirements? Uh, this particular case study from the textbook where there is a, a, a case on New York Stock Exchange. And then, so they were developing uh, information system. Therefore, and they were not contacting the users. Therefore, the since the IT group they have not engaged with the, uh, their users. Uh, finally, what they got oh, is an incomplete system. So they have to spend additional uh, cost to enhance all the required features. And in the Swiss bank, uh, another similar case, um, an IT department didn't uh, you know, uh, consider the user's requirements. And then what happened later, outside consultant delivered a successful system. So what happened is because of that reason, item IT team has to, uh, you know, replace as the consequence of this, right? So therefore, when you are designing user systems, you have to be very careful because there are many other teams who works on the similar designs, similar work. So you have to compete each other. And what is most important is the satisfying your uh, user. So key takeaways from modern software engineering, um, uh, we have already seen some of the principles that we have to follow. Uh, and the system we have to tailor made to user needs. And you have to, as a member of our IT team, you have to actively participate with the user meeting. Now, remember in our group works, we don't have a user, but you have to think like a user. In our, uh, even when you are designing uh, information system for the problems given to you, in today, we are going to actually ask you to design a user interface. Actually, you, I'm going to ask you to design a user interface storyboard. So in, in your case, the problem is you have a team, but we don't have a user. So you have to think like a user, remember that. Uh, so IT teams, you have to, uh, if you had a, you know, users, you have to actively participate. Uh, with users, ask them to ask them users to participate in, especially when you are designing or you know planning for a iterative cycles. Um, so use you can use ideas actually. Uh, there are many people actually came up with how you should be designed to satisfy user, so you can incorporate those, and 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 they are. They are changing rapidly, so you have to uh, look at what is happening. What are the new, you know, techniques where you can satisfy the, uh, you know, users? Uh, for example, uh, in early days we were not very focused on user interface designing, but then we have uh, 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 tools like Figma, for example. They came up uh, with with uh, similar, uh, you know. Uh, tools, uh, now you can collaboratively design the uh, interfaces. So there are tools now coming, it's not like an early days, a couple of years back, we didn't have actually Figma came in around like 2016, which is like about eight years. So earlier we, we had some, but uh, not as popular as uh, today's. And one thing you need to remember is failing to 
prioritize or failing to meet in use and user needs may lead to uh, various difficult uh, situations or costly consequences. Maybe they, they will, uh, management has to redesign the system or maybe they have to purchase from something else. So which uh, you have to be very careful. Right, now that we have discussed about the importance part of uh, uh, user interactive designs and uh, the users in the design process. So I'm going to today focus on user interface design. And um, I have a small question. Okay, uh, so when we look at the, the system designing, one of the important uh, thing is uh, the user interface and where we can uh, see how users can interact with the system. Uh, and when we want to uh, design, you have to use some of the principles that we have discussed early. So how uh, the computers and the users performs their job effectively, right? And remember, uh, those principles can be implemented to develop systems for like smartphone, we are like very complex uh, uh, distributed system. So all these places, you have to use human computer uh, interactions. So a couple of ideas I'm going to discuss in detail. Uh, under this. So uh, you can uh, have functional decomposition diagrams to understand the business. I told you it's a, and you can maximize the graphical effectiveness, use of colors, use of fonts, and be consistent in using these. Do not, you should not use too many colors or too many fonts which should distract your user. And when you are designing, you have to think like a user. I think I have highlighted. Okay, this is what I'm going to focus for today. Use models and prototypes. Very important. So before you really design your system, you should come up with the models and prototypes. Very important because you can get the users in. Focus on the usability. Uh, use common choice. For example, when we ask date, you can put today's date, for example. And always get their feedback. So you know that uh, when you visit web pages, sometimes they will get whether you are satisfied with the you know, interface. And so you sometimes get, see some pop-ups comes in and you know, ask user feedback. And you have to document everything because as a designer, so this will be helpful for uh, the users as well as the development team. Right, some of the things or uh, you know items that you might see um, in user interfaces are listed here. So you can see that uh, you will have text boxes and usually you will see in gray color that, okay, it will tell us enter pin. Sometimes even without, you, you can have a separate text description, but in the text box it, itself, you can have some information. And sometimes when you request some site that pin, uh, you know, you will, you know, inform the user what you expect. Like here it says, pin must be four digits. It's very useful. And if if users are caps lock, it's also you can have a message say that, okay, caps lock is all. Because we want to prevent errors or mistakes from the user. And things like autocomplete, like when you type something like auto and then it should list it down like the possible values, which is again, very helpful. Date and times you can automatically fail in, right? Buttons, you can have like multiple choices. You can have large buttons or small buttons that depend on the user requirements. Then uh, uh, you can have, uh, you know, text boxes where you can have multiple selections. You can also notice that you can see completely select. And when you uh, uh, move the mouse, it you see it's partially select. 
meaning that when you mouse over, it will turn into different color. And partial selected is also selected in a various ways that you can understand how things are selected, right? So likewise, you can notice that uh, you know, various different elements are used in user interfaces. So whether you are going to use a, a list or choice, it's up to the designer. So there's no you know, single answer for this one, right? And in this particular case, you will see in different uh, uh, operating systems provide you different interfaces. And when you are designing uh, systems, let's say multiple operating system, you have to maintain the consistency, right? Remember, we discussed that earlier as well. Okay, uh, this is what I want uh, from uh, the, as the, uh, the, the group work today, that you have to design or you have to model your whole system uh, like this, where you put everything as kind of a user storyboard. So storyboards are very common in movies where before they really create the, uh, you know, movie, they uh, put everything in into, uh, you know, planning, like what is the first scene, second scene, third scene, and so on. Similar to that in user interfaces as well, we will have, uh, we will have, uh, you know, a storyboard like this. In this particular case, what you see, let me try to uh, zoom out this. with I can find magnifier. Right. Can you see the magnifying list, please? Can one of you confirm whether you can see the magnifying lens? Okay, maybe then. Yes or no? So when you look at uh, when you look at the user interface in a storyboard, you can have the flow of working of your system in graphical way. For example, in this particular example, you see there's a sign in activity that is the first interface. So this is indicating that the start of this. And there we have asked to provide user name and then you can click into login. But if you do not have an account, then you will see that we have a sign up button. And if you click the sign up button, then you are presented with uh, different uh, you know, user interface where you're supposed to enter username, phone and email. And when you sign up, right, you will get to interface like this. So this is called my profile activity where you have a home page 
and you can see users username contact information and then the photo and if you want to say borrow then you can see the titles available the different in this particular case there are four items and you can see that if you click on let's say the last item then it will uh, presented in a, a different interface where you get the information about the item and then the description so if you click uh, make bit then you are going to make a bit for the item so you can put a bit and a rate and then you can click on this so that's how this at the same time if you want to know more about the particular use who listed the item if you click the user two, you will see you will get the contact information right so that's about the uh, one way to interact with this one so if you look at the everything so this will show you complete uh, work on the system right so depending on what you click, then it will present a various different one. So we have checked with the borrow one in case if you click on my bits, then you will be presented into your bits information, things I'm borrowing. So then you have a list of this. Again, you can click the item, same information will be presented. Then. If you click my stuff, then you will get presented as my items and you have a list of items. And when you click this, so you will get the item information and, and also the highest, uh, you know, bit. So that information is available. So I hope now you got an idea about how user storyboard works. So in user storyboards, what we really need is we can list everything and how our information system works for the users. Uh, the other point that I want to highlight is now, nowadays we have what we call responsive designs. We have, when we design system, you have to think about the various, uh, you know, interfaces like web interface, tab, that means if you are viewing Let's say your web page in your desktop computer, your tablet, and also your mobile phone. So all those things you have to have separate design, how it should be displayed in a various different design that also you can put it into uh, the similar format. Third one, there are some things that I want to highlight when you're designing user interfaces. Usually when you look at main, uh, interface you might see something like this where you have to pick different tasks so in this particular case we have uh, an interface where we focus on uh, student services and then you can see there are buttons which reflect various different functions and there's a button for exiting so these are known as some of the menu choices and when you click on one of these, it will be presented with a new interface. Uh, so I think these ideas we have discussed earlier as well. When you're designing user interface, it should be easy to learn, user productivity, help and feedback, create attractive layouts, enhance the interface, focus on data entry screens. I will check, I will discuss this item. And user validation which we have discussed earlier as well, and reducing the input volume, right? The first thing that I want to discuss before you draw your user uh, story uh, or user interface or use user storyboard, what you need to uh, first list down your functional decomposition diagram we call FDDT, which means how and what features are available in your system. For example, in a custom order tracking system in main menu, there could be three main, you know, uh, options. So you can have one customer orders and products. So that could be your first interface in the main menu. When you click on customer, 
For example, you can go to add new customer, update new customer, delete customer, and so on. So the function is which relevant to customers. Same thing can go for orders and the product. So if you can come up with something like this, that will be very helpful. So therefore, in, in the group work also, when you're designing a user interface, first thing I want you to try out as you will uh, identify the structure of your system. And once you identify the stru uh, uh, structure of the system, then you can design the user story board. Right. Then, um, so depending on what you click, it will, uh, you know, put into a new form. So this is what we have highlighted here. We are, you know, you are going from one interface to another interface based on uh, user's selection. So for example, if user clicks adds a project record, then you are presented with that project or, you know, interface. Uh, when you have a interface like this, keep in mind, there are things that you can uh, automatically generate. For example, in this particular case, we are getting customer orders and order number is automatically generated from the system. You know that uh, uh, in relational database, for example, uh, uh, the, the key, uh, primary key, that you can generate. For example, in this particular case, order number can be automatically generated, right? And then there are things user should input. For example, user can input about the item ID and the quantity that they want to purchase, whereas the system can fill the remaining. So you can see when the use uh, when when user enters the item ID system can automatically fill the description, date and time, right? Uh, and then if the user enters item ID, you can have the description. And when user enters quantity, you can automatically fill the unit price and then the total price, right? And similar to that, if the customer enters his customer ID, automatically you can fill customer need and then you can calculate even the grand total. So as you can see uh, in this particular example, there are three parts where system can generate things and user has to enter some of the places and then you have to uh, you know, automatically fill based on the recorded data. So those things are the three things that you have to focus on when you are creating an interface like this. Okay, with that said, uh, we are going to start today's group work. Uh, but before that, let's mark that end.